It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is brought to you in part by Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson, when hurt people need help. Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson in Ponca City. It's time for The Verdict. And welcome to The Verdict. I am Mick Cornett, and I am joined by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. Kent, welcome to, to another good show. Yes, and uh, happy three-year anniversary. How about that? That is. We made it. Amazing. <laughs> April of uh, 2001, we did our first show. It was actually, quite appropriately, April Fool's Day in uh, 2001, we did our first show. And uh, had uh, two interesting guests, uh, John Nance and John Coyle. John Coyle being a, a uh, really a premier a criminal defense lawyer uh, for our third anniversary show today we're going to be joined by Jimmy Lynn who also is a premier a criminal defense lawyer as well as uh, what could be uh, called a lawyer to the stars he's represented a lot of famous people Jimmy has had a colorful uh, effective interesting uh, uh, career in Oklahoma City and in uh, Texas and around the world frankly uh, we are uh, thrilled to have him he'll be exciting to, to hear about uh, he's uh, also, this is not why we have him, but he's also the, uh, the father of Rex Lynn, the actor. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jimmy is, will be on to celebrate our third year uh, with our viewers, and we're so glad you're still here. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. We will meet Jimmy Lynn, attorney to the stars, when we return. You're watching The Verdict. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guest. Really pleased today to have a longtime friend, uh, Jimmy Lynn, uh, a premier trial lawyer in the nation and beyond our, our boundaries, but uh, a resident of Oklahoma City. Uh, Jim uh, grew up in Spearman, Texas, graduated undergraduate and law school at, uh, down in Texas, has a career of having been a prosecutor. He's been in private practice in Oklahoma City for many years. Uh, he has the uh, distinction of being the father of Rex Lynn, the actor, uh, among many other distinctions. He's represented many celebrities. In fact, we kind of bill this show as the lawyer to the stars uh, because Jimmy does have uh, much experience in representing people uh, that you've heard of before. This is uh, his first uh, appearance on The Verdict. He just got off an airplane from Hawaii. We're really pleased that, Jimmy, you could uh, fight through the sleep and, uh, and come join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Uh, I know uh, one of the uh, clients that you've done an awful lot of work for over many years is the uh, widow of Ferdinand Marcos, Imelda Marcos, uh, from the Philippines. How did that representation get started? Uh, how did uh, Imelda Marcos find Jimmy Lynn in Oklahoma City and, and need, need help? Well, I, uh, I had a friend uh, who was on the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Abe Fortas, and he uh, uh, referred me to uh, a man in New York, a very important man, who gave Richard Nixon a whole bunch of money uh, that seemed to be in violation of the campaign lawyers, and he referred him to me, and uh, we worked the thing out. And uh, I, uh, Abe Fortas uh, sent clients to me, and uh, uh, because of my friendship with him, a uh, New York lawyer uh, referred me to uh, Adnan Khashoggi when they, uh, I forget what year it was, but uh, they called it the trial of the century then. The, the American government indicted uh, Adnan Khashoggi, the Saudi arms trader and Mrs. Marcos and her husband, Ferdinand Marcos. They were in Hawaii. Ferdinand Marcos died in the, uh, while the, tri the thing was pending. Uh, and Mrs. Marcos was tried. She was represented by the famous lawyer from the West Coast, uh, uh, actually from, from 
Wyoming, Jerry Spence. Mm -hmm. And uh, they called it the trial of the century then, and we tried it in the Southern District of New York. And when that, uh, they were both acquitted. And when the trial was over, uh, Mrs. Marcos hired me to be her lawyer because she had additional problems. And uh, I've been her lawyer ever, ever since. And she's still living in Hawaii? No, she lives in Manila. Oh, she's back in the yes. Philippines. Yes. Uh, what uh, do you recall as perhaps the highlight of your representation of Ms. Marcos after that trial? <clears throat> well, the highlight is uh, that, uh, I, even though I didn't represent her at the time, uh, the highlight was, of course, the acquittal because nobody in New York believed that uh, Khashoggi, a Saudi arms trader mm -hmm. in New York mm -hmm. City, could be acquitted, and nobody believed that she could be acquitted. Was that a jury trial? It was a jury mm -hmm. trial. lasted five and a half months, and uh, they were both acquitted. Let me ask you about David Bowie. All How'd right. You, how did that relationship begin? Same way? Uh, a New York lawyer called me one day and uh, and said, uh, uh, a friend of mine said, I want you to represent this guy. And I said, for what? And uh, he said, rape. I said, well, I'm not too much into rape, uh, but what, is, what does he do? <laughs> he said, well, his name's David Boy, and uh, he's, uh, I said, what does he do? And he said, he's an English rock star who made $55 million singing last year. What kind of a person is he? Well, he's very, very, believe it or not, uh, uh, stiff. Guy, no, maybe stiff's a too harsh a word, but he, he's a very formal Englishman, and uh, the allegations of this case were rather lurid and uh, made him look like uh, really some kind of a, uh, that he had great sexual prowess, and uh, I told him he should plead guilty, <laughs> and uh, he, he did not think that was funny, uh, but anyway, he, we got him clean. Mm -hmm. uh, one more big name, and then we'll kind of change the subject a little bit. But I know that you've represented Dinah Shore. Dinah uh, Shore was a friend of mine, and I was her lawyer for a long time. What yeah. uh, what kind of work, uh, without getting into the, anything that's confidential, yeah. what kind of work did you do with her? Oh, uh, uh, those were business matters, really. Dinah was a saint. She never would be in any kind of trouble. I mean, she she's a pure, was a pure lady in every sense of the word, as is Mrs. Marcos, by the way. Hmm. You were going to ask me about the shoes? Yes, I was going to ask you about Imelda Marcos, 3,000 <laughs> pair of shoes or whatever the number was. Well, when she was first lady of the Philippines, which she was for 22 years, and she's dearly loved there uh, because she built the heart center, the lung center, the, uh, she built everything in the Philippines. And uh, she uh, they have a hundred, at least a hundred shoe factories in Manila, and the Italians send leather over, and uh, the Filipinos make the shoes and send them back to Italy and make the very. It's outsourcing, mm -hmm. and uh, send them back, and the Italians mark them up about a thousand percent and <laughs> sell them to your wife. Uh, but uh, every when they come with the new lines, every spring and fall, I guess. Uh, they would come and give Mrs. Marcos shoes. Well, most of the, she's got at least 3,000 pairs, but most of them don't fit her. They're not in her size. But she does, in fact, love shoes. I drive up Northwest Expressway and see your name on the side of uh, the Integris Medical Center there. What, that must be something you're very proud of. Well, yes, I've always, uh, I'm, I'm proud of that institution. Uh, uh, you know, I, it's, it's a great, uh, great institution and uh, uh, I've, I've always been partial to them even though I'm not Baptist. But uh, What specifically carries your name at, at that facility? Well that's the uh, the heart uh, area, the surgical tower up there for the heart. Uh, that, that had a uh, great deal to do with my close friend Dr. Nazi Zudi who's you know been uh, mm -hmm. for a long time has been very prominent there. Still is prominent. Mm -hmm. then... Attorney James Lynn will be back with more on the verdict right after this.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers with our guest, Jimmy Lynn. Kent, where are we now? Uh, Jimmy Lynn was a respected uh, trial lawyer in Oklahoma City when I started practicing, and I followed your career with great interest and appreciation, Jimmy, over the years. Uh, you've been in the, in the trial arena for, for many, many years. What have you seen as the principal changes that have taken place uh, over your practice, for good or for bad? Well, one one good thing that's happened uh, in the in the trial field, when I started, when I went to the University of Texas Law School, there were only three women in the law school, uh, and they were going to be librarians, legal librarians. They were <laughs> going to law school to be librarians. Well, now over half of the uh, the people in law school are f are females, and uh, I think the great change is. Uh, uh, that we have more women practicing law and taking part in the thing and any uh, w women always have a, an ameliorating or softening uh, uh, in whatever they do we I think we should have more women in government but that has changed you see many many trial lawyers and uh, f female trial lawyers and and they're getting better all the time they're gonna they have some stars already they're gonna have some superstars and the reason I say going to have is because to really be in the trial field and, and really understand it, you've got to have at least 20 years under your belt or, or you, and you're still going to make some mistakes. But that's the change. I also see a great change now. Uh, lawyers are becoming more civil in the courtroom and the depositions. It's, uh, it's not... Uh, is that good or bad? Oh, I think it's very good. I, you know, I've seen lawyers that just are just totally uh, belligerent from the word, from the very beginning, and uh, hostile. Well, the law was never made. Uh, the law is made for confrontation of, of ideas and facts and so forth. But it was never meant to be uh, brutal and impolite, ungentlemanly or unladylike. We're in the middle of the Terry Nichols trial in McAllister. What are your thoughts on the Terry Nichols trial in Oklahoma? Well, I never thought he should have been tried. He, he had, in my mind, the worst penalty already that he that anybody could have, and that is uh, uh, life without parole. And where they put a man like Terry Nichols, they virtually put him in solitaire, uh, like they did John Gotti. Uh, like, I mean, a prisoner like that is going to be uh, isolated. And he'll uh, he'll wish a thousand times that he had gotten the death penalty in the situation that he'll be in. I don't say they torture him, but I'm just saying that his future is terrible. And to waste the taxpayers' money in Oklahoma to try him to try to get the death penalty, which probably will be reversed anyway in the appellate courts, uh, when he's there's no way he can get out of his life sentence. It's final. Uh -huh. You've You've been trying cases for a lot, of, a lot of years. Are there any highlights or significant events that stand out in your mind as uh, things that uh, uh, are most memorable to you? Yes, I would say. I would say back in the, uh, in the 80s, uh, I, was, uh, I was indicted. I was with Four Seasons. I came over here with Four Seasons Nursing Centers. and. The New York prosecutors called me up there. They indicted the, uh, the principals, uh, and they called me up and wanted to, uh, to New York and wanted me to tell a story on the, the chairman of uh, of uh, Four Seasons, and uh, which I declined to do because I told them it was not true. And uh, they indicted me on 55 counts because I wouldn't tell that story, and. Uh, with with three Arthur Anderson partners, uh, the accounting firm, which was was not in disrepute at that time, uh, and I was out of money, and uh, n nobody who hasn't been uh, pursued by the federal government can realize the trauma of it, uh, uh, because they have all of the uh, the advantage. They have the advantage, the presumption of guilt. We, uh, in this country, we don't have a presumption of innocence. We have a presumption of guilt. 
and uh, so you have to overcome that. Anyway, I tried it. I, I represented myself. Two New York lawyers represented Arthur Anderson, and uh, the trial lasted five months. It was transferred here to Oklahoma City, and and I was acquitted in in uh, I was acquitted in less than seven minutes after a five and a half month trial, and uh, that trial. Well, as Samuel Johnson said, if a man is to be hung in a fortnight, it greatly focuses his attention. <laughs> <laughs> and that focused your attention? It focused my attention. I represented myself, and mm -hmm. uh, I told the, the, the jury in the opening statement, I said, a lawyer who has, a, has himself for a client has a fool for a client. That's the old saying, but I said, I'm the best I can afford, so. <laughs> What do you think about television cameras in the courtroom? Well, I think it would be all right. I think it might uh, it might make the lawyers and the judges a little better. You would have some some showboating uh, mm -hmm. uh, there, but you know some some judges wouldn't want the people to see their demeanor in the courtroom. Let me ask you about jury selection. It seems mm -hmm. to be that we're putting more emphasis on jury selection these days. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just my perception. What's your thought on jury selection? How important is it? Well. I've tried, I've tried cases, jury cases in 42 states, and uh, uh, some of them were important cases, and I, I've, I've used many jury consultants, uh, everything from uh, the client's aunt to <laughs> doctors of philosophy to psychologists, and, uh, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the fact is you can't predict what the relationship between a certain juror and y yourself as a lawyer is going to be, or what the relationship will be during the trial to the lawyer on the other side. And uh, so it's, it's, not a, it's, it's an art, not a science by any means. But I do use jury consultants uh, in, in major trials, and uh, sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. What's the longest trial you've ever had? Well, uh, I was in, in the Khashoggi and Marcos trial. The trial actually lasted five and a half months, but I, I stayed in New York nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had several that have lasted about uh, five or six months, uh, wow. accounting cases, audit cases representing uh, uh, accounting firms. And uh, I tried the famous Golden Buddha case that they've made movies about uh, in, uh, in Honolulu. I hate to jump in, but we are out of time. Good. Jimmy, appreciate you coming in and being on the verdict. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Good to see you. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. Okay. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers here to wrap up another show. Always fun to have Jimmy Lynn around. I've known him for many years. He's been active in the practice here for a, a very long time and quite a, uh, an interesting, colorful, uh, fascinating character. I appreciate him giving us his time uh, to uh, uh, highlight our uh, third anniversary show. And in that regard, we have now finished three years uh, and hopefully many more years to go. Uh, Mick, any reflections uh, from your standpoint on um, three years? A blur, 150 <laughs> half hours, and it went very quickly. I learned a lot, you know, and I hope our viewers did too. Educational opportunities for me every week, and, and I think our viewers appreciate it. I know that a lot of the feedback that I get is that people say, you know, I didn't know that until I saw it on the verdict. Well, that's what we really have always tried to do, as you know, since you, you were with us uh, all the way through from mm -hmm. uh, show one to show whatever today is. Yeah, yeah. Our our uh, philosophy here is to try to just present information and not necessarily opinions of Mick or opinions of Kent, uh, because uh, your opinions are every bit as valid as uh, ours might be. But our guests have the information, and we want to continue to give you those kinds of guests that give you information that you want. And we hope, by the way, having said that, 
that you'll come onto our website, uh, theverdict.tv, and let us know what you kind of shows you'd like to see in the next three years. All right, Kent, thanks. Good show again. Thank you. Don't forget theverdict.tv. That's our website. Tell us what shows you'd like to see on a future episode of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week.